Yo guys, it's Deezer HD here, and uh, I've got another Cinema 4G tutorial for you. You will be able to do it in R12, but I'll be doing it in R13. So, let's go straight into it. What we're going to be creating is this type of effect that I uploaded, where you can see the text falls down, and got some, like, it's cloth is what we're going to be using today, some cloth. So, let's hop straight into that. So, let's go into Cinema 4D. Here we go. The first thing we'll do is um, our render settings, as always. We'll do 1280 by 720. All frames, you want that rendered, and let's say 200. Uh, I think let's do 140, 150 frames, be fine. Um, you can go into our save, we want that as a quick time movie. Options H.264. Click OK and choose where you want to save it. I'm not actually going to save mine because um, it's all done in Cinema 4D, rendered, and I uploaded it. So that's all I did. Um, maybe added a little bit of color correction, but you can do that as it's really simple. So uh, then I went into anti aliasing, I put best and 2x2 and 4x4. Options I went to ray depth 6, reflection depth is 2, and the shadow depth. Six, and you can take off blurry enough blurriness if you want, but I'm just going to leave it on. It will speed up your renders though, but I'm not sure if it will make it as nice a render. So then you want to click Effect, uh, Ambient Occlusion, and Effect. You can have global illumination if you want. I choose not to, not because of the render time. I just thought the render looked better without it, and I'll show you that uh, in a second when we render it out. Okay, so that's our render settings done. We then want to go up to MoGraph and go Mo Text. Get our text in there. I'm just going to put in something like, I um, don't know, test. Let's give it some depth. Let's say 50. And I'm just going to leave this font because I quite like this font. We can align it to the middle. And let's give it some subdivisions. We need a lot of subdivisions. So let's say, I think I gave it 25 subdivisions. And we want our intermediate points to be natural, so it subdivides this way, as you can see if I zoomed in here. You can see it's got, if we take that off natural, see, there we go. You can see it was on adaptive and it still doesn't have any, so natural looks good. Uh, let's go back. And we can make more of them by moving this number up. Let's say 20 will probably be fine for that. And then we need to add some caps onto the um, some subdivisions to the front here. So we can go to caps. First thing, I'm going to actually add some fillet caps and steps. We'll put three radius is two. It was very subtle. You can also always add more steps if you wanted, but that'll be fine for me. Same with the end. So three, two, and then we still haven't got our caps here. So what we're going to do is go type to quadrangles or quadrangles. Uh, check regular grid and put the width to say 5 and you can see we've got quite a few subdivisions maybe lower that there we go 3 looks good we need a lot of subdivisions in this so it's a really nice smooth animation and the cloth looks good so there we go we've done that basic bit there got a lot of polygons so you can always lower these numbers if your machine isn't powerful enough to handle it so the next thing I did was went to simulate um, cloth and I did a cloth nerbs and just left that in there that makes everything like it's like a hyper nerbs for cloth really so when we simulate it it will smoothen out all of the cloth and make the animation much nicer you then want to select your mo text and hit C on your keyboard and that will make this an editable object and you want to go to the point tool which is this one third one down for me and uh, on our mo text we can go right mouse click we can go select children, hit C, select children again, and then right mouse click and connect and delete. There we go, we've got this and we can start selecting points on here and you can see we've got you can see we can select points. And uh, we're gonna go into the live selection tool and we want our radius to be about five or six. Six will be fine. And we're gonna go right mouse click on our Motex, simulation tags and cloth. And we want to go onto the dresser tab and just leave it like that. 
and we need to just select a few points. So if we go into our selection tool, hold shift down, and we want the ones on the top to be selected. So we can just start like basically painting in all of these. Not really painting, but you just want to select a few. It doesn't. It can be completely random like this, but you don't want it to be like right across here. You could do, um, but it's all up to you. But I want it just on the corners and stuff, really. So. And to delete points, you hold Control or Command. Look, you can just like rub them out. So that T looks good to me. Maybe just select a few more around here. Maybe a couple more up here. That looks good to me. We then move on to the E, and we want to do the same. Just like color it in, really. Not too much. So. Um, just paint around there. That looks cool. Um, the S, I'm going to do, you don't have to do it like me at all, you can just put, do it however your letters are laid out, like, because you'll obviously have a different word to me, but just going to like colour in this section here. Always holding shift, remember guys, if you're having problems with that, then just hold shift and it'll select multiple ones. There we go. That one looks cool. Maybe select these two here. And then the last one, but not least is the T. You can select this side of the T. You can select both sides of the T actually. We could do that just to give it a bit of variety. See how that looks. Oops. Uh, hold shift and just paint. There we go. Now we want to go into you can see we've still got our cloth tag selected and dresser. And you want to hit fix points. And all of this will turn pink which is exactly what we want it to do and we need to go to say let's extend our timeline to 150 and let's say for the first 40 frames let's, let's go into our f um, we're only going to be changing the forces so let's hold command and just click this dot next to say gravity and you want everything to be zero basically so like this zero this zero um, all of this can stay the same like the wind, drag, impact and lift because that won't do anything as you can see if we hit play it's not going to be doing anything so if we go back to frame 40 whoops, click stop you want to hold command and click all the way down keyframe all of these there we go go one frame ahead by hitting this button here then we're going to start changing some of the values. So gravity, we're going to put to say minus 2.1. I think that's what I used. And the wind on the X will leave. The Y can be 0 0.5. Z can be 0 0.6. And you can see as we change them, the points go yellow. So that's a, that's right. We want it to do that. Uh, let's say the wind strength. Let's put it as something quite low. 0 0.4, 0 0.5 would be good. Um, maybe the turbulent strength, we can add some turbulent strength, let's say like 20, 25 is the turbulent strength. Uh, the drag we can put to, we can leave the drag actually, and everything else we can leave um, looks all good to me. The turbulent speed, um, that can just be left as zero. Then we want to go hold com command or control and just keyframe all these again. They'll go red. And now if we hit play, you can see we've already got this really nice effect here. Like that. And what I did was I actually didn't add any texture at all onto it. You can see it does take quite a while. Maybe to speed it up, we can go into our anti-aliasing and put it down to 1x1x2x2. Um, by one by two by two, just to speed it up just that little bit. There you can see it goes much quicker now. And you, as you can see we've got this really nice effect and the only lighting I used was I went into my material, no in my content browser sorry uh, went into Grayscale Gorilla, got an overhead softbox and that's it I didn't put any materials on my um, on any of my text, I just left it and added that tiny little bit of colour correction to give it the colour but I quite liked it like this as the mood of it you get this really nice dark mood and you can see if we say if we go back to the start 
and we rendered this out. You can see it's just like a grey text. And if I render that out, um, uh, do you want, yeah. So if I render this out here, we'll do like a comparison. We'll put on global illumination, irradiance cache. I'll just put this down to minus four, and I'll just show you why I preferred it without. So that one's almost done now. It's rendering all the frames. Let's go file stop rendering. Yeah. And we can just go render. Yeah. As you can see, we'll just see the difference now. Let that carry on. Right. So now we can have a look. We can see that's the one with with global illumination, and that's without. You can see the light. What it does is bounce the light around a bit more, make those shadows a bit softer. But when we get further into the animation, around say here to this section, it looks a lot better because the colours are too bright. I think the white is too bright, and it doesn't have the same sense of mood uh, that we get with this without global illumination. So it is. Look, you can see they're very white and almost bleached out so I actually prefer it without global illumination but with the ambient occlusion it looks really good when it's going like in between all of these like cracks and shadow shadowed bits and stuff you know what I mean so that's basically all I did you can see we see the text for about a second because we've got 30 frames a second so it's a tiny bit longer than a second and then it starts to fall down and I just didn't animate the camera because I quite like the effect it got when it got here we can extend our timeline to say 200 we can play this so you can see our text for a second obviously it'd be a lot smoother in the render and then we get this really nice it looks a bit like chewing gum type effect and you can also try using in the cloth tag if we go on to tag and we click use tear, you can see when we start to play through, we'll get a completely different effect, I would have thought. I didn't actually try this, but it starts to rip the fabric at the same time, so that looks that also looks really cool there. It's got some nice like cloth movements in there. You can also add like a hypernerbs onto the text as well if you wanted to smoothen it all out just that little bit more. And as you can see without it and with it, it just smoothens. Let's have a look at this point just here. Um, zoom in. Right, let's have a look just at this one. And it's decided to keep zooming. Um, so this is with the hypernerbs, that's without. You can see we've got a, quite a jagged, sharp shape with it. It rounds it all off, makes it look much nicer. So that's all cool there. And that's the tutorial for you guys. You can use that in your intros or whatever. And I've just been like messing around on Cinema 4D with this cloth tag and there's some really cool things you can do with it and there will be some more tutorials on it. But thank you very much for watching and um, just keep stay tuned and I'll do as many tutorials as I can with the work that I've got to do for school as well. So thank you and I'll see you in the next tutorial.